Welcome back to the show. Now, it is a very interesting time when we look at the concept of national identity, but also how nations are also developing their own rules and regulations when it comes to external interference. Now, I say this with a sense of jest because I realize I do live in the UK and we have our own issues taking place on this side of the pond. But what has predominantly been the news recently is the whole Canada and India spat. And there's a lot more to this because it has a direct impact for those living in Canada, but also the areas of understanding what identity is and what belonging is. In order for me to understand the perspectives at large, I'm joined by two friends of the platform, albeit both friends on different sides of this conversation today. One of my friends on here is Jasveer Singh, who you know from Sikh PA. He is an extraordinary journalist, has been on the show before, talking about some of the pressing issues. We butt heads before, but we've also shook hands, which is also a good thing. And the other friend of mine is Sander from Bharat Marg. Again, we have butt heads on many times, but we do also shake hands. On the purpose of this show is to really have an open discourse to say what is the current situation taking place in India and Canada and the impact that it has amongst the communities living in the nation. So to help me guide me first, Jazz, I'm going to give you the microphone right now in your mind in a very brief way. What is the current issue taking place in Canada and why should the world know about? And then, Sandra, I will allow you to also talk as well. Jazz, over okay. to you first. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for that kind introduction. And um, thank you to, uh, I guess, my opponent for the day to for joining us. Hey, this um, this okay, is an NDTV. Summary. There's no opponents here, Jazz. <laughs> cool. Fair enough. Yeah. What my colleague is to say then. Um, so in summary of what actually is going on, as you said, what is the dispute about between India and Canada? The central issue is, of course, Khalistan, the Free Sikh Homeland Movement, which has been uh, practice and some would say thriving in countries like Canada. And that has been targeted by the Indian state unequivocally, undeniably targeted in a way which is criminal, targeted in a way which is violent. And that is being classified under the banner of transnational repression now. That's where it's being termed by Canada, by the USA. Both of the, these massive superpowers have implemented legislature, which actually um, ratifies this as an issue. There are individuals currently both on trial for acting as Indian state terrorists targeting, targeting the community in Canada and the USA. So in summary, what is the issue? The issue is transnational repression. The issue is a country like India going out of its way to criminally target Sikh activists in the diaspora, namely Canada and the USA, as I said, but also we're well aware it happens in the UK, Australia, Germany, we could go on. So the issue is transnational repression by India targeting Sikh activists. Sandra, you hear this. You're also based in Canada. Sandra, in your mind, in your words, what is the current issue taking place in Canada? See, the issue is very simple. Okay. Justin Trudeau is running a minority government. And, uh, you know, J Jagmeet Singh is doing a drama of pulling out. Okay. Because he is not going to pull out. Because his government, whenever now confidence motion comes, he will support one way or the other because he has a big payout coming on February. Till that time, there is no danger for just into the government. So he is going to get in millions in the uh, pension. So till that get cleared, he will not pull out. So these are all drama happening. So he has to keep himself good. And uh, this is a world way of doing, you know what? I'm I'm stupid. Okay. And uh, you know what? Uh, oh, you are blaming me. Oh, only 17% approval rating I am having. Now, what is that I can do? Well, oh, I can show the finger at that guy and uh, blame. Because see, Chinese have a police station here operating. They didn't do anything. And uh, they cannot do anything to India. It's a, it's a clear cut. Okay. Because India doesn't need Canada. Canada needs India. Okay, for so trade. If, if I get it right then, Sandra, in your mind, this is not about the murder of a Canadian citizen. This is more political posturing political in order to get voting in. Today, today, Justin Trudeau was skinned and exposed thoroughly by the MEA of Indian government. Indian government said, say, 
who who is uh, who is the um, who is the sharpshooter who is leading the operation of uh, um, uh, La uh, Lawrence uh, the uh, gunda there you know who is uh, leading the thing it is uh, goldie brar goldie brar is operating freely from canada so this uh, <laughs> india said okay if that is the case why can't you extradite yeah. him you so know understood. why now... do you protect him why do you save him Okay. and this is a, one second okay this is a drug mamla okay i'll say why because uh, bian singh's grandson when he was in congress okay he said most of the gurudwaras are controlled by pannus and other terrorists operating from uh, canada and usa where it is used for drug peddling and other illegal activities and supported by the government and now he is the minority okay. minister of india okay so they had to go and clean up you don't see i'll just say one word okay every 5 minutes there is a car theft happening in canada okay every 20 minutes there is a home breaking happening kidnapping happening killing happening okay and they don't have ability to clean clean up their own mess and all they can do is without sure, okay. evident talk well thank it. thank you for the 5 minute thing there so i'm going to bring it over to you jazz so but just to make it very clear then sandy you're saying this is not a murder case this is not the fact of what the canadian government is putting forward which is saying we have a canadian citizen a canadian citizen was killed on canadian soil by yeah. an international government are you saying that this is not about that case but this is more political posturing from absolutely. the absolutely but then why don't you put out a fact you have internet right in canada you have internet put put out all the facts who should what you what proof you have put it on the internet everybody to see it Yeah. And it is your incapability. So, you so are your 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 key, your key point is is saying because you are based in Canada as well, Sanders. So your key point is saying, if there is evidence, let the public see the evidence from the Royal yeah. Mountain Police. Okay, you, uh, Jazz, I could see. Right? Yeah, no, you're fine. Right? Yep, absolutely, Sanders. So now I'm going to give the microphone over to Jazz, who was patiently staying on the sidelines. You're smiling, you are laughing, and you're thinking, what on earth is happening here? So, Jazz, what is your feedback to this? Because for the outside audience before we get into the politics that may be up course here from what it seems like for people on the outside a canadian citizen was murdered and the canadian government alongside the us government has said we have evidence to suggest strongly that an international government in this case happens to be india were the perpetrators of this and therefore we are now taking the next stance However, Sandra has said some other news around that which seems that this is a bit more of a community issue as well as an international issue. Just how do you make sense of all of this as that's taking place? Um okay, so with all due respect, I think everything we heard is the classic Indian nationalist deflection tactic which drags the issue away from talking about the very real fascism which is being exported by the indian state and brings us into complete conjecture which has no sound basis and i'll give you a couple of examples so firstly the idea that this is vote bank politics from justin trudeau the sikh community within canada is approximately uh, 1.5% uh, population of the country tiny percentage of the country now within that demographic i'm so sanda himself will say that there's not many people that support khalistan there only a small fraction of the sikh community that's something that we hear from um uh, indian nationalist rhetoric so within 1 or 2% even less than that it are significantly khalistan supporters according to the likes of sanda so why would a prime minister court such a tiny fraction of the canadian vote if this was about vote bank politics there are much bigger issues that they could garner support from if they wanted to if this was really about vote bank politics now moving on to the accusations about godwaras being run um as criminal enterprises again this is complete conjecture that has recently been debunked by the sacramento b one of the biggest newspapers in california they just released an investigative journalist piece this is a a uh, newspaper that i think that's been around for approximately 100 years in california can't be called a sick newspaper or a calistani newspaper in any way shape or form 
and they exposed the fact that North American Hindu-run organizations were lobbying for the Indian government in a way which was attempting to criminalize the Sikh community in a way as we just heard. Like my friend um, across the screen from me, he referred to Gurbatwant Singh Bannu, a uh, Khalistan leader within the Sikh community, as a terrorist. He's never been convicted of any crime at all. He's been living as a new as a lawyer in New York for most of his life. And he's been investigated for all types of things because of these accusations and pressure that the Indian government and the Indian lobby is putting on him. He's been found to never have committed any crime. Same with Shaheed Bhai Hardeep Singh Nijal, the person who was murdered by the Indian government last year in Canada. Uh, in June 2023. They've been investigated. They've been found to have committed no crimes, but the Indian lobby labels them as criminals anyway. They label them as terrorists anyway. Why? Because there's a fundamental different philosophy between Indian nationalists and largely the West, the rest of the free world. The rest of the free world believe in free speech. They believe that if you have an idea right now, for example, that Scotland should be free from Britain, you can campaign for that. You can have a referendum for that. That happened in the UK. Same with Brexit and leaving so the right European Union. Self-determination, yeah. Self, the right for self-determination, as you're saying, enshrined in the UN uh, Charter for Human Rights, same as the USA as well. So the idea that um, what is happening in Canada right now is simply about vote bank politics, it doesn't make logistical sense when you think about numbers, as I said, think about how small the Sikh community is, and within that they will claim this Khalistan community is a lot smaller, it isn't from my perspective, um, but then on top of that, these unfounded, completely baseless accusations of criminality, which have been investigated and nothing was found, so what this again is really about is the fragility of the Indian hierarchy. The Indian hierarchy is based on a fragile, caste-based system. And when groups like the Sikh community, the Khalistan community come out and challenge that system, there is immediate fear and panic because I think the Indian lobby know that India is built on a house of cards. Winston Churchill famously said, and I'll end with this, India is as much a nation as the equator because he recognized as somebody that you might recognize as one of the founders of India, if you will, in some way, shape or form, that India is such a different country from bottom to top. The people look different, they talk different, they sound different, they live different. It's a vast mix of different types of people. And therefore, trying to run it as one government nation was always going to be a problem. And Khalistan movement is currently exposing that. Sandra, what do you say to that? Because, again, breaking it down and i want to bring this back down to the canadian issue because i know now we have a few things being flung back and forth but what is your response to that because what jazz is saying is look we're here we're we are both in canada you both ultimately made the choice to be in canada and the way i read this is that this is a canadian issue and a canadian individual a passport holder a national was murdered on the ground now if it wasn't the government of india and let's say for example it was the government of russia would we still have that much anguish against it Great or point. would things change so Andrew, what's your thoughts on the matter is this a religious See, issue is it an indian no. issue is it you, you know it, it is down? nothing religion nothing religion all the gurus sang about krishna rama you know guru Tej Bahadur kept his son. no please my time Guru Tej Bahadur kept his name, son's name as Govind. Okay, so it's not about religious issue. It's about, I'll say what. Okay, let's go back to uh, one of the things. Uh, my thing is, if you, if is India government involved, okay, let us assume it is involved. Put out the things on the open, number one. Uh, number two, let us assume it is involved. You people went to Canada, Pakistan and eliminated Osama bin Laden. What is that different from this? You people okay. being Americans? Yeah, I'm talking that. about America. Americans, okay. Okay, what is that I'll, different I'll about? You, okay, okay. So what is that different with this? Okay, you 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 went into Pakistan and you did the surgery. Okay, let us assume India did, which India is refusing. Okay, and number three, the, the thing about Gurudwara, what I said is not what I said. It is said by the Congress MP of the time, whose okay. whose uh, grandfather was murdered by Niger, okay. and he came in the name of Ravi Sharma to Canada, and who was the, re, refused for fake marriages twice. Okay, and then he was honored in the uh, same place where the Nazi was honored 
where the other criminals were honored in Canadian parliament. Okay, okay. okay. So, no. so Sandra, I've heard you out, but we're going to stick to the facts here because opinions are great and they're wonderful. No, no, no. I'm not, it's a fact. fact. Why not you? Then, then you, that's what I'm saying. Opinions are great, incredible. Yeah. Put out uh, Justin Trudeau. Okay. I will, I will say, Mr. Justin Trudeau. Okay, be man enough and put the evidences on the internet for everybody to well, see. I, th it. I think that's, a, that's a, that is a, that is a very valid point because it's saying if the evidence is there and the evidence showcases quite clearly and it demonstrates that a government is involved, therefore would everybody accept that? Now, you did also make other mentions there, Sander, which makes me believe that although this isn't a religious in issue for you, but may I ask you a question? No, it is not a religious not a issue religion. for me. Are Sikhs Hindu in your mindset or are Sikhs separate religion? You you can think any which way you want. No, no, it's okay? a question for you. It's a question for you. You, you. you know, see, my thing is I read Guru Granth Sahib. My, yeah. my Same, kids yeah. do uh, Shabad on Guru Granth Sahib. Okay, my time, I'll finish it up. Okay. And oh. uh, 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 Dahi Bhat Kayo. You know, that is on Krishna, Yasoda, Maya's thing, Dasarad, son, daughter. Okay, so many things are there. I love gurus. Okay, I have gone, gone and done episodes on them. And uh, so I don't see any religious issues here. And you have the right to feel any which way you no, want. No, absolutely. You know? But the, the question I, I, had... I believe, I believe my brother is my brother. Okay. okay. But my brother thinks he is not my brother. Both have the right to do so. So... Because the reason why that question is posed, because you mentioned something earlier that I think Jazz wants to now respond to. So Jazz, you wanted to have a right to respond, so your right to response is here. Thank you. Um, okay, firstly, along the idea that because within the Sikh faith, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, the Sikh Gurus, they um, refer to Hindu deities or they use Hindu language, if you will, language associated with the Hindu faith a faith within Sikh scripture, that that means we are one and the same, is ridiculous and also contradictory to what the gurus said themselves. Now, I'll, I'll just summarize and end it here. In Sikhi, we have what are known as the Panjbaniya, the five prayers which are part of our spiritual medita meditative breakfast, if you will, as is described by some educators. Within that is a prayer called Chope Sab which is myself, Maharaj Kirpa, I, I, I recite every day as meditation. And there's a line within that which goes, Ram Rahim, Puran Quran, Anek Kehe Matek Namanyo. Long story short, Ram Rahim, it puts Hindu scriptures and Muslim scriptures in the same bracket. And it says the Sikh is not to follow either of those. That's from Guru Gobind Singh Ji themselves. That's literally what they say. It's something we recite every day. Please, anyone, go check it out in scripture. So although we do make references to Hindu deities and Allah, and also even biblical references as well, can you believe? That's how great Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj is. The message is actually that all of these are perceptions of the one, of divinity, of the one God. And Sikhi views them all as one. And Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, not, none is bigger than Guru Nanak. And that's the lens that we see all of those uh, uh, those different references through one lens. And that's the lens of Sikhi uh, that teaches us all at one. And there's no separation from that. So that, if they're going to say that we're all Sikhs are Hindus based on that, then others are going to turn around as they do and say Sikhs are actually Muslims as well. So they can fight over what they want and ownership of the Sikh faith. That's up to them. But Guru has said themselves that don't that's follow true. Hinduism. And, and the reason Islam. why I think that's quite no, an interesting question. So, so no, no, Sander, Sander, Sander is before. back onto Jazz. Jazz, sorry. Just, just, just the last thing I want to address is he mentioned, he keeps mentioning evidence, evidence, present the evidence. Now, firstly, I don't know why any rational human being would not take it very seriously when a massive government like the Canadian government is running with this. And remember, this came from CSIS, Canadian Intelligence Services. They have now affirmed that it's come from also the Five Eyes Intelligence Network. The Five Eyes Intelligence Network is USA, UK, Australia, Canada. And um, who am I missing? Is it... Uh, the, the, the intelligence network is five of the biggest countries in the world have an intelligence network that runs and they have affirmed this messaging that actually the Indian intelligence service services are carrying out terrorism targeting the Sikh community this has been affirmed by investigations by the Washington Post 
people should go out there and read their investigations about it. The Guardian as well. They have, again, affirmed this. And now this is being affirmed by CBC. There's a, a great journalist called Evan Dyer. He's come out and said approximately that three, four months ago, he said for a long time now, the Canadian government have thought nothing else other than this is the Indian government behind this. Idea is that this is sick criminal criminality taking place in Godwells or drug dealing or whatever else. They have long been dismissed and they're distracting um, accusations. So they're not going to say all of this if they don't have evidence. And the last thing I'll say about the evidence is actually why are six Indian diplomats being expelled from India? Because they are withholding evidence. The Canadian government, Canadian authorities know that they have evidence which links them to murder of a Canadian citizen, can you believe? They refuse to cooperate and reveal it because some of their friends are going to end up in jail because of it. And instead, they've accepted that they're going to be expelled from the country. So that's why right now, within about three days, six Indian diplomats have to leave Canada because they are hiding evidence. Now, uh, again, with that, I'll refer to you, Sander. Define evidence. What do you actually want, want them to show you? Do they want do you want them to show you a video of Amit Shah saying, I want Hardeep Singh Nidjar killed and then going out and carrying out? What what would constitute evidence for you? Because that exists, by the way. Amit Shah has said this has happened. You compared them to Osama bin Laden. The only difference is they're innocent men. They've been investigated for crimes. They've never been found of any criminality. And that's I don't a, think that's that a good point. So, so Sandra, I'll give you the chance now for the right to response. Um, what do you say See, to that? Because he, what Jazz is Justin saying quite Trudeau, clearly. Justin Trudeau has a 17% approval rating. Okay. Who is not even believed by his own party? Okay. But Sandra, now our in, friend, in all, no, in all no, due no, respect, no. hang on. So bear with me. In all due respect, the question is what evidence would you want to see in order for you the, to say. What evidence? Okay. Let us Thanks. assume you say. I came and stole in your home. Okay. Mm. I I stolen your things. I say what evidence you have, what evidence you will give. So you I'm saying, the prints, video footage, please, anything please like hold that. On. Please hold on, my friend. Please hold on. Okay. I let me finish in my time. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Ravi. Rajan, you I'm know, so what, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say so if, what evidence would you want it? What evidence would yeah, you if, want let us assume? Her? Let us assume I say in this example, you steal from my home, you stole from my home, you you robbed my car or whatever it is. Okay, what evidence will I have to show? So I think my what... my word is enough because I have my skin color white, or my my word is enough because the Anglo section uh, uh, the group gang, the five five eyes or whatever they say, whatever they say, so do you... proof is a proof. So do you feel then that this is a great sabotage towards India then in your mind? Do you feel that the world no, is conspiring against India? No, it's not a great India? sabotage. It's not a great sabotage because it's affecting the Canadian people. I I believe India should take more stricter action, okay, because it's not enough. Because the kind of what Canada can do, okay, India has to do, take more stricter action and uh, uh, serve the ties with the uh, uh how, not how, only how would that so sander here's a question for both of you which is interesting you're both currently in canada and you're both canadian citizens but you're both obviously born outside of canada is there part of this that feels almost slightly ironic because <laughs> we're having this big discussion saying well india needs to take action or everyone else needs to take action but ultimately the people who's going to be hurt will be you both like sander you know, how does you know that what? work for you you know what? I, one one lady get married to a family and comes to the home of the husband, for example. Okay, and that doesn't mean they will allow their other family or even the home where they are to abuse their parents. Okay, that's the situation. India, so you, I could have left India and come here, but still, India is my mother. Okay, that's my mother nation. Yeah. I, I ate there, I grew up there, I learned everything from there. I am not going to let anybody do the nasty work there. Interesting. So you feel it's more the attack of India is an attack on your It's identity. not only India, an Indian attack. They they hate Hindus. Okay. Yeah. How many Hindu temples have been robbed in Canada? How many Hindu children have been killed in, in uh, Canada? What kind of things? You know, Hindu homes are targeted for uh, 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 door breaking. Cars breaking, you know. I say Justin Trudeau become a man enough and reduce and, uh, and make sure the car theft every five minutes. It's the Pakistan of the West, okay? For every five minutes, one car is getting stolen, and every twenty minutes, 
I was there doing a video with the Peel Police. Okay, Peel Police. I did a sting video. It is available. And they say yeah. when I ask them what, okay, I, I asked the Peel Police. I did a sting video on them. I asked them. Okay, why do you guys twenty minutes, man? Every twenty minutes there is a home yeah. break in at so, nine o'clock in the I morning. I hear your point. You said some clear things there that are quite interesting, which is about you feel attacked being in, in, child in Canada, killed. and. And it feels like that is one of the biggest things. Now, I know one thing that is has always come up, Jas. I know Sander has mentioned it before on his platform, which is about the Air India bombings. It's something that has always gone up. Sander, I know that's something that you're very passionate about, saying that you feel that the Air India bombings was an attack against India. And would you say it's an attack against Hindus or would you say it's an attack against Indians? Sander, are you there? You are yeah, asking yeah. me. I'm asking no, you. So the, the it's India. the biggest terrorist attack done in the Canadian soil. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a Hindu. Why? I don't see any difference here. Many people died here. Many variety of people died. It's not about Hindu. It's about the biggest terrorist attack ever happened in the soil of Canada. And and, and, and I... also keep in mind, keep in mind that was during Trudeau's father's term. And before that, before that, Indian government gave the reports to them, be reports to Trudeau's father that this person is going to bomb. Okay, we are having, uh, we are having the reports. It's coming up. Okay, make sure that he is getting extradicated. No, they didn't do that, and the bombing was done. They don't care. Yeah. Okay, they don't so, care. This is Trudeau's DNA. Yeah. Okay. No, I hear you. I hear and I hear the passion. So, Jazz, coming over to no, you. No, it's, because... it's not passion. You are talking about humanity, right? It's absolutely. How will you, yeah, abs how will yeah, you absolutely take right. it? Yeah, absolutely many right. Many children died. Many so, women Sada, died. Sada. I've heard your point, Jazz. Over to you. You're right to respond. Okay. There, it is something yeah. that has always come up about the Air India bombings, and it's come across right the platform because the moment that this murder took place in Canada, it was something that was thrown almost back. What insights can you provide on that then? Okay, I, I can provide lots, but before that, I have to go back to what Sander was just saying. He has completely lied and fabricated an incident where a Hindu child was killed, apparently by. Khalistanis in Canada. He's completely made that up. That didn't happen. He, I never can, said uh, if he wants to provide. I never he, said Khalistani. Okay, so, yeah. No, no. I okay. never said Khalistani. I said so, Hindu children are being killed. I said Hindu temples are being vandalized. Okay, that's enough. I never no, used you interrupted. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Sandra. Okay. Thank you for okay. the clarification. So, just back to you. Okay. So, again, just going back to that, I think he, he was mentioning a few things which are baselessly accused of towards the Sikh community, specifically the Khalistan uh, supporters. Uh, again, with uh, Hindu temples among those being vandalized, a newspaper, the Times of India, they received a declassified document from police in Australia, which said they believe a Hindu hand is behind graffiti on mandars in Australia. The belief is similar in Canada. The Ontario's Goddard's Committee put out a $10,000 reward uh, two years ago to catch any culprits of such vandalism. No one's come forward, no CCTV footage. And it's funny for someone like Sander who keeps demanding that these massive intelligence organizations, uh, organizations like Five Eyes, like uh, the CSIS, they need to provide evidence. They must provide evidence. He's gone on a rant now accusing many people of many crimes with no evidence whatsoever. And when it comes to evidence, it, let's remember this. He talks about if somebody comes into my house and robs my house, then there will be evidence there. Yes, there will. There won't be evidence that I'll be able to show you online and say this is proof. Because if I show fingerprints of the robber, you're just going to say, that's not his fingerprints. You, That's fake. You got that from somewhere else. So you can keep going down this wormhole where you keep rejecting the idea of um, what is clear evidence about the links to the Indian government and terrorism being carried out targeting the Sikh community across the world. But the reality is this. The reality is that major, major authorities across the world, major media organizations, they've uncovered this. They've exposed this. They've intri with intricate detail. They have narrated what is going on with the uh, hit, uh, the Indian movement, the Indian regime and the way it's conducting terrorism across the world. That's evidence. Everyone can throw out the conjecture 
whatever they want, as Sander is doing. But the fact and the reality is six Indian diplomats are being kicked out of Canada in an unprecedented move yeah, for no reason at all. Absolutely. Now we can go on to A and so, B. So, yes, yeah, so I was going to say, we're going to the A and yeah, D moment, but I do understand A&D. Sander's point. Because I, I will I, let you speak I, after I, a while, Sander. Sander's point is quite a strong one, saying if there's evidence there that supports that there's a danger yeah. to Canadian citizens, the government of Canada should have in its power and its ability to protect its citizens to provide that evidence, say what needs to happen. But before Sander continues, um, Jazz, the one point that Sander has made before in the past is about the Air India bombings. It was a humanitarian issue, but it is an issue that has almost painted the community in Canada, rather, if they're Sikh or Sikh supporters of Khalistan or even Sikh supporters of a Scientology region, whichever it may be, but it is something that's always come up that has always made people look at Canada in a different viewpoint. What is your answer towards that? Okay, I think the first thing to understand is that not a single Sikh, not a single Khalistani of any note of any organization in the world ever since the 80s has either praised what happened has either uh, taken responsibility for what's happened as a community. This is something that we completely condemn. Still to this day, Sikh organizations, they go and condemn exactly what happened. They speak against it. It was one of the worst atrocities in Canadian history. And every Sikh organization thoroughly condemns it. Why do they condemn it? Not just because of the tragedy which happened, but because there is a deep understanding that and belief with uh, supported evidence, which I will um, get to in a second, that this was a false flag operation by the Indian government. Sorry, I just have to get my charger one second, keep my laptop running. And um, this belief is based on a lot of very interesting facts, which there are experts out there presenting, one of which is a guy called Harjit Singh, based in the USA, a former Indian army officer. So he is somebody who's actually fought for India, can you believe? Uh, and he has spent the uh, a significant chunk of his life dedicated to uncovering and exposing actions by the Indian government, which are you can only classify as fascism. Now, just a couple of things. There is a list of Indian officials that cancelled their flights for the Air India bombing. This is a very strange coincidence. If one official did it, you'd be like, okay, that's a bit strange. When a few of them are doing it, and I have a list literally on my phone I can pull out, that is very suspicious. On top of that, I have quotes from very respected CSI, CSIS officers from the time that specifically say, if we want to find out what happened, really what happened with the Air India bombing, we need to investigate those at the Indian embassy. And guess what? 40 years later, they've begun that air investigation, which is maybe a tad bit late, but that has begun. On top of that, you've got Globe and Mail, Globe and Mail, one of the most prestigious organ- uh, newspapers in uh, Canada. They wrote at the time as well that there is strong suspicions based on um, anonymous Uh, sorry, not anonymous, but um, uh, confidential sources within CSIS that have to remain confidential for their own safety that, again, point the uh, the finger towards the Indian government. No one was ever convicted of this crime, by the way. No Khalistani was ever convicted of conspiracy to carry out their NDM bombing. There was a few people convicted of something totally separate to do with the trial, including like things like perjury, lying, uh, manslaughter, again, which is done without uh, intention. No one was ever convicted for this bombing. Don't forget that. So, so that, this is associated so with the Khalistan saying... movement. Just to summarize, this is associated with the Khalistan movement, once again, as a way to try and malign the whole community as terrorists. But now in this age of 2024, we can look around and we can say they call like Diljit Dosanjh a terrorist sometimes. They call Ravi Singh at Khalsa Aid a terrorist sometimes. They call everyone a terrorist sometimes. What The way of the Indian word when it comes to using that term terrorist carries no weight at all, especially when you know that Narendra Modi himself was once banned from entering countries like Canada and the USA because he himself was uh, classified as a terrorist by the West. So this accusatory way of pointing fingers at others, I think there needs to be a lot more internal reflection. And really, if you if you want to look at child killers, child murderers, this is happening in India all the time. Every accusation you have about Canada is multiplied. Sure, we'll, but we'll keep this conversation centered around Canada. Um, but I do understand. Yes, Sandra, you, you, of course, you got your okay. point. Listen, number one, Times of N- R- India report, my friend said, 
okay said the uh, hindu hands on the in, uh, india hindu temple vandalization i will recommend him to put out that uh, uh, evidence what times of india has said it okay please put yeah, out okay, okay. Now, like because sure. start please Okay, so time. Sander, you because mentioned that. So, Sander, Sander okay. let me help you out here. So, Jazz, okay. no, when we when we do no, the no, podcast, please let me you, finish. My... Sander, Sander, bear with me. So, Jazz, when we do the podcast, we can put that on the podcast as well, so Sander can see that. Okay, I'll okay. make sure. Number, yeah. number two, number two. Okay, we have proof of uh, Hindu hand in it. Okay, I will love to see it. And there are a lot of uh, uh, things. Uh, okay, and don't okay, don't ask uh, any questions about evidence. to justin trudeau because he is a big man he is the king his daddy was a pm his granddaddy was a pm so don't ask him any question because he is a big guy hey this is a democracy yeah everybody i have the right as well as uh, the other guy if you say something you better put out the evidence i don't trust nobody i trust the evidence okay if you are a man enough justin trudeau put the thing on the yeah. internet let everybody see it okay and now 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 the thing is you know let me say you something us and canada want to shake india they have done a regime change in bangladesh and slaughtered there all the people they were the behind the thing now the western countries want to do re regime change in india and failed miserably in the election okay uh, by meddling it but i want to say something to these guys you know what this india is not that india that was there during the kanishka bombing for you to play whatever you like to this india is more stronger more vibrant you need india today than india needs you um, sandy so i'm slightly confused and help me unconfuse myself the conversations is around canada and having a look at the impact that this is having on mm -hmm. canada and you're living in canada at this moment in time mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. Okay mm -hmm. but you're obviously very passionate about india and india is part of your identity so the question is if information is provided as jazz is saying that unequivocally showcases that the indian hand was involved in this would it change your perception of india would it change your perception of self and likewise jazz if the other See, side is true if there is information provided by india that unequivocally shows no 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 india will india... not provide any information india will wait india and, to unless provide... unless you, you, Sandra, unless you, you think... have the ability and the legal right to speak on behalf of india No, I no, think no, that no. that's something you can't India say. But my my question is, and should not provide. Why? Because if you say that I came and stole in your home, it is your responsibility to provide the evidence to the people, not the guy. Who, because I said you are a thief, you came and stole in my home. Now you put out a thing. That's, okay, that, so I can I can see where this is going. Out. Sander, is there a part of you then, being a Canadian citizen, although Indian origin, but being a Canadian citizen, likewise for yourself, Jazz? is there a part of you that is slightly worried then that what does it mean to be canadian are you given the full rights of protection from the government of canada because this is what this comes down to sander um let's say for example if it wasn't the government of india it was the government of pakistan and they said what bug does as a media platform you reach out to a court i think half a million people across youtube what you do is against pakistan we will now come over hypothetically speaking and make sure that we deal with you as an international threat would you feel worried would you not feel that canada has got its right to protect you as a citizen and as a taxpayer see uh, your your question again little bit simplified ask me again sure, you are sorry, talking my, about... my bad so to make it really simple you now live in canada correct mm -hmm. okay so say for example your media platforms there and another government let's not say india but let's say it's a government like pakistan because you mentioned but not for any other reason so pakistan like, like said like they that, killed Bal uh, karima baloch yeah let's use that as a potential example that they said we do not like the media work you're doing we do not like what you're standing for we will come over to canada and we will eliminate you is there a part of you thinking what well, actually as a citizen of canada as a canadian citizen as a taxpayer the canadian government should actually protect me they shouldn't allow these things to happen see do you think osama bin bin laden had the right to stay alive um that's in that's Pakistan. an interesting question but that doesn't answer the question I'm asking you the no no is... that answer you i am just asking you osama bin laden had the right to live okay so do so do the bian singh killer 
Okay. So you're saying that that shouldn't happen then? Is that correct? No, I am not saying anything. I am just asking. You cannot have one rule for you. Okay. Skin color discrimination. It it's not going to happen. Okay. I am who I am. I have one rule. You have one rule. Is not right, and it's not going to happen. So you're okay. saying all is fair in diplomacy and identity? No, no, it's. Not. I am saying there are no two laws. One for you and one for me. Understood. Okay. So, Jazz, let me throw the question to you then. Do you feel safe being a Canadian? Uh, so I was actually uh, written about by the Index on Censorship. They did a profile on the work that I do with the Sick Press Association, which came out, um, I think, about four or five months ago now. And I sat with one of their journalists and they saw the death threats I received from Indian nationalists on probably a weekly basis. And they wrote about the way that Sikh journalists like myself, I can name others, uh, Pandit Singh Ghazi, for example, in in uh, Punjab, many others are targeted. There's one actually, uh, Preet Singh Saini, who was killed and a uh, sitting MP in India uh, a few months ago just said that they suspect this was, again, the Indian state killing a journalist that was exposing corruption and human rights abuses in India. So do I feel safe? Um, not from the threat of the Indian nationalists. Now, I know I'm probably low down on the list compared to a lot of others, but I received a lot of death threats for a reason. This was, you know, I had that profile on me written for a reason because certain journalists recognize that people like myself are targeted by the uh, Hindutva regime. And I, I just want to point back to what Sandra was saying. What he's essentially saying is, you know, India has a right to go abroad and kill who in his eyes, you know, Osama bin Laden. The problem is who they define as Osama bin Laden is just based on whoever whoever they want. It's based on people that use free speech, for example. The, again, the, the people that he's accusing, they've been investigated for crimes. You're not going to be a terrorist in a country like the USA with a beard and a turban that's well known across the world and get away with it. They're going to investigate you. They're going to throw you in jail. They're going to do worse things. But for India, you are a terrorist if you just criticize Modi, for example. You are a terrorist if I say I'm sick and I'm not Hindu. So now we're terrorists. So now they have the right to kill all of us in Canada and the I USA. Think, I think that would advocate. be an unfair statement, but I know Sander didn't say that. However, Sander, I am going to allow you to come back in a very short... So who has Bin Laden, though? I'm concise... asking you, let him answer this. Who is Bin Laden and what crimes have they done to be Bin Laden in India's eyes? Okay. Are you happy to take that question on, Sander? Yeah. See, ask Pakistan. Pakistan always felt Bin Laden was a good guy. They safeguarded him. Okay? So, it's, a, it's from the perspective of the country. Where, uh, same like how uh, how uh, uh, you know canadian government is projecting uh, protecting all these uh, criminals and uh, 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 terrorists now number one okay i'll say okay let me let me say this sure. number one i'll say to canadian government okay and uh, justin trudeau in specific okay canada is a beautiful country canadians are nice people okay it's about a one man ego whose dna is of his father who allowed the kanishka bombing to happen and he is trying to do because he to run the government. He is running, to, trying to uh, please another Khalistani terrorist. However, whose Sandra, passport we, we, is Sandra, no, no. We whose can't passport go down those is lines. nullified? You know, Jagmeet Singh cannot get inside India. Okay, he is banned from get, getting into India. Okay, yeah. and he is trying to but please. Sandra, now, please your my thing please is your Bin Laden. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. A, now my MP. thing is very simple. My thing is very simple. You know, there are no two laws. Okay, if you have evidence. Put out the evidence. If you think Indian Indian gundas are inside, okay, Lawrence Bishnoi's gang leaders are inside operating from Canada, Justin Trudeau, I mm, request that's not you, true. please, please, okay, like like Goldie Brar, who is one of his uh, biggest uh, uh, guys who is operating from, you know, this that's is all, this all won't open. Okay, that's I'll say true. anybody, okay, open, yeah, please, please give true. me a minute. No, don't interfere me when I'm talking, okay? I didn't interfere you at all, okay? I'm All I am saying is, if you find a criminal who is involved in these kind of criminal activities, extradigate them to India, back. Okay, don't harbor them here in Canada, and don't then don't cry, don't cry wolf. Okay, sure. if you have evidence, put out. You are not big cheese. 
okay you can have any skin color you want but lie in the world is simple well, one lie so here's, here's put a question the evidence, put out the evidence you got you have a discussion if you don't have evidence you are just mm, doing yeah. because you want to say you think you can win an election with a 17% but, approval but, rating but uh, sandra i think one thing is fair what ja at least i found it quite an interesting that jas broke down the numbers and said look the sea community make up under a percent within canada the sea community who believe in khalistan is even a less percentage so even mathematically speaking if justin no trudeau was trying to vote bank amongst that community he's better off getting brain surgery from ray charles because something yeah. does that add up but on the other side then, sandra but sandra one question i want to ask you though is is this issue of india and canada is it going to have an impact amongst the diaspora and when i mean diaspora i don't mean indian nationals but people of indian origin or south asian origin in canada do you think this has actually created a split with south asian canada south asian origin it doesn't have no impact why china has to have impact why pakistani has to have a impact no it's about the people from bharat it might have a impact you know you, you will you know it will have a impact for some time till the because uh, canada is you know till steven harper was there there was no issues at all india and canada were at the best of the best relationship but that, but that isn't a country to country state to my, is one my point is one man ego to save his political career he is spoiling the uh, relish foreign relationship that's it it does seem that way doesn't it but i suppose it depends which side you're looking at the map from. and uh, and uh, if a good side. leader comes to canada i am sure good things will happen do you do you okay so moving on obviously we've we've hit the hour here and i promised everyone this was not going to be end of tv and i'm very thankful to both of you being friends of the platform or being very courteous to one another moving on what has to happen almost that like kumbaya moment where people in canada can actually have open conversations around the ideas looking at Khalistan or the ideas looking at Bharat in an open discourse manner because obviously the accusation and the mudslinging isn't working so sound on your side what do you think has to happen in order to get people talking about this in the open and like us with yourself Jazwe because what you've heard is obviously for yourself what you believe is a deep misunderstanding of what Khalistan represents to you now obviously the caveat is not every hindu uh, believes in a certain hindu ideology and not every sikh believes in the khalistani ideology but as human beings living in canada apart from meeting putain we need to find a way to get on i will myself support khalistan okay when they have the nerve enough to say you know our our sikh religion born in lahore that has to be the capital of they said that one of the biggest okay. khalistani leaders has let, his own video saying it. that i am let, let saying it let me finish let sandra yeah you okay so when they do that when they ask for it when they fight for it i will definitely support okay so if, one if link they are clear go... for those who don't understand you're saying once they ask for khalistan in pakistan as well is that what Which you mean they have done no no where done. where was the sick where was the sikhism born where well, where was guru nanak from i think okay. from india and, uh, where it? where 4 million where 4 million people were murdered during the independence sick you know uh, everybody were murdered during the partition where was it? india and pakistan yeah we remember na ah, yeah yeah you remember okay yeah. so yeah you know why why the people are coming carrying the guru granth sahib and the head and running over to india you know even from afghanistan recently why now you're mocking people that are running from no the... no, no but why i understand i am somewhat so when i says... respond why mocking what immediately okay, victim can i can i jump no, in no. here then okay, okay. so so, so i will, I will support I will it the when you, when that when the originality comes in okay when the whole territory when they ask for it when they fight for it but having said that then now different sex can relieve different you know in india different sex relieve because hindu majority is there okay you take about pakistan how many percentage was there in 1947 sikh percentage and how many percentage is now you yeah. take afghanistan in 1947 how much percentage of sikh population was there and how much is now mm. you say me and how much population was there in india and how much is now Okay. Yeah, that's okay. a very good point. So the population the, the, community that isn't has... a good point, and I'll explain why. Yeah. So bringing, can I allow Jas now to have those feedback? So. so Jas, on your side, 
Sander has made some bigger discussion pieces there. And I think the elephant in the room is that although we talk that this is about a Khalistan issue, it seems to be a much deeper issue around the ideas it's surrounding religion. It's a conflict religion. of philosophy. It is. So, it's, it's, yes. it's not religion, if I could explain. So essentially, again, what we're seeing here is the philosophy of the Indian nationalists of the Hindutva movement being exposed, which is simply, you can be classified see, as a terrorist. I never based blamed us, but I always ba based, get blamed based on what people like Santa think, if you are being critical of the Indian movement, you are labeled terrorists. He has labeled X amount of people terrorists now. Not one of them has been convicted for any such crime as terrorism. So what, Not what's... one of them is even linked. The, the murder that he's talking about, which happened, it happened when uh, Hardeep Singh Nijar was not even in India. So he's apparently murdered someone from across the continent with, uh, I don't even know. So, they, so... they just make things up. So, so no, let me finish. Let me finish. Please, sir. Um, the, the constant accusations of terrorism reflect a, a conflict of philosophy in that the way the Indian state views criminality is very different from the rest of the world. There's a pro guy called Professor Andrew McLean. He went on uh, Indian TV and they said to him, what do you think about these Khalistani terrorists doing this, that and the other? He said, you can't call them terrorists. This is on video and I'll share that with you as well, Rajan. He said, you can't call them terrorists. You might not like what they're protesting about. You know, might not like what their movement is about, but it's not terrorism. For example, the Khalistan referendum movement is called terrorism. It's a non-binding referendum. It's a, a it's a pure act of democracy in action in a way which is, again, non-binding. It doesn't affect anyone. It's just an exercise. But nevertheless, even that is classified classified as terrorism by the Indian state. Now, he keeps going on about evidence. No evidence has been shown to not show none of them are uh, terrorists. But nevertheless, he can keep banging on about this. Now, I, I want to go to just to the, quickly to the question about the Islamic countries, Pakistan yes. and Afghanistan and the situation there. Six have been open for a long time that the situation in these kind of countries is horrific for the Sikh community. There's no doubt that there have been uh, great movements to help Sikhs escape this kind of persecution they follow in that country, which I personally feel he was mocking there because there is a famous image of Afghan Sikh community carrying Guru Nanak Sahib Ji Maharaj, literally walking out of a place, putting their Guru first to escape the persecution of the Taliban. And people like Sander mock them doing that and saying, look what they're doing now. I, for me, this is, again, a reflection of they're no different. They're actually just like the Taliban. They don't realize it, but they do the same thing. Now, why is the population different? Is because, yes, less than 100 years ago, let's remember this India-Pakistan divide is less than 100 years old. There's people alive today that are older than India and Pakistan. Yeah, a decision was made, which has, again, had repercussions, which we're seeing right now. And I could get into a deeper one about that. But nevertheless, this idea that six don't, um, or the Khalistanis don't say anything about Pakistan is a complete lie. There is a Khalistan leader, Bayamit Pal Singh, on video. I'll share the video with you, Rajan. You can Please. implement it in here. He is literally saying, and he's known as one of the biggest Khalistan leaders probably since the 80s. He has said, we do want Pakistan, we do want Lahore, but it's one step at a time for the very logistical reason of most of our population being in India and the fact there was a Sikh genocide carried out by the government, which has been ratified now by uh, many a uh, Western intellectual, many a professor. And again, around November time, we're going to see them further emphasize that. But because of those things, we're starting with India. That's, that's where the uh, movement has started and that's where it's kind of currently focused. And then they will move further and beyond too. But don't pretend that this doesn't focus on countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan. They also are very criticized by the Khalistan movement, by Sikh communities about situations there. And there's well, a lie to say Sa otherwise. Sander has already said on, on no, camera that I, he would join your movement as long as you go for I, I just so Sander, are you now to, being implemented? I, He's a one, okay. I have one thing. I'll just make my last point. I have to go sure. to the next show. Okay. I'll just uh, make uh, make up on my point. Okay. Uh, number one, there were close to 40 plus percentage of people. Okay. From uh, 40 to 47 percentage of people from Hindu Sikh community was in Pakistan after partition. And today it is less than 2%. Okay, in in was, Afghanistan, it was never forty seven percent. That's made up. No, you go and check it. Okay, I'm saying the right thing. You go and check it. Okay, so we we will find the evidence. The Present the evidence. Show us the evidence. Put it there yeah. now. Show us the evidence. Yeah, see, see, this is the thing. Okay, listen. If I say Niger Niger killed Bian Singh and came in the passport of Ravi Sharma, you know, yeah, he was. 
Okay, he Russian came Russian. after that. Yeah, yeah. He came after Canada that. Canada have investigated yeah. him for this. Canadian so authorities have investigated please, him. Let me finish it. Gentlemen, no argument. Gentlemen. Please finish it. Okay, okay Sandra, please finish on, it. On your side. Okay, no argument. Okay, so and uh, his and his grandson. Okay, his he was in Congress that time. The the same people who did the genocide of Sikh genocide. I agree with it. It happened in India. I agree with that. But who it was done? It was done on behalf of one family, like Trudeau family. That is a Gandhi family. Well, the mobs did that were running around India. You know, were they one that, family? Can yeah, one family kill forty thousand people in a week? Yeah. Please now fifty thousand. The numbers are there. Okay, more than hundred thousand Hindus were. Please no, don't interfere okay. and talk. You have your own time. I will make yep. my last point Sandra, and I'll go. On, on you. Okay, please. Okay, I'll finish it off and I'll I have to leave. Sure. Okay, number one, the, there was a Hindu genocide that took before that in Pakistan, uh, Punjab. Okay, under uh, right under all. the terrorist. Uh, please. Okay, Sandra, uh, we, ha we have to be very we two. have to be very careful that whatever we say substantiated and this conversation is about Canada and India. Very yeah, important. yeah, of course. Of course, you know when when there is a thing comes, we will respond, right? And uh, the who who was said the the same Congress party under whose stu stewardship the genocide took place, the massacre took place. So okay? is the so in your mind the Gandhis are to blame? You you, do, you think they are not? No, no, I'm asking you. So in your can mind, I say, I'm just asking you. If you are not, let me know. Okay, because the the, the, the you know the, after that Congress ruled Punjab for many many years. Okay, they have been given again. Uh, uh, you know, they they were never punished. They were given the things. Okay, so Kamal Nath became a CM who was involved in that the same thing. Yep. Jagdish Titler was involved. Okay, so okay, let's not go there. Yeah, All let's I not go talking, down that side. Le, le, I am not. I, this is not a discussion forum for it. All I am saying is, Mr. Trudeau become a man enough. Okay, your seventeen percent approval rating is not going to be saved by your drama. So, People know Sandra, you. I hear okay. you. So on that note, you know, so on that put note, out the evidence. Put out the evidence. Put out the evidence. You know, the evidence. You know, no skin color. You are not big <laughs> man. Okay, listen. I I am who I am. You are who you are. And the lie is one for everybody. Don't don't do lip exercise. Just yep. put out the, the evidence. evidence on the, the net. Evidence. What if would be evidence? It, what would you see? It, I... Otherwise, no. we'll go. Okay. But anyway, uh, I have to. I, I know Sandra. I know Sandra would not leave murder. without allowing Jas to respond because that wouldn't be fair, and it will give the wrong optics. But Jas, your question, your question to Sandra is. Yeah, what can you just answer, what would he actually see? What would he need to see with his own eyes that would constitute evidence? Like, tell us tangibly, what do you want to see? Like, what would be evidence? What would you accept as evidence? It happened in front of the Gurudwara. Yeah. Okay? Okay? In, in the Gurudwara. Guru Nanak in Gurudwara, Gurudwara, where he was the president. Okay? Yeah. And I know that. So I, they I, have I've all the footages. They, they have all the footages of the uh, criminal who shot him. Yeah. Okay. So, the, what is the link between him and Indian government? When the Indian government spoke to him, how they think India? Because Canada is filled with the goons, and this is happening everywhere. Okay. okay? Everywhere it is My happening. Okay. So Thank they you. have no, no, no. I am responding. I am yet to sure. finish. Okay. It's, All that's I am not saying answer, is though. put out the evidence. Trudeau yeah, has but to you put have out answer the the evidence. Okay. Anyway, let's Otherwise, move on. No. This is Okay, I get okay. you, Sandra. It's so Jas, you're gonna say the evidence has been provided by the Royal Mountain Police of Canada. I, again, he didn't define what he would constitute as evidence because there isn't anything. People like him are just going to deny it no matter what. They could literally, you know, in the USA, <laughs> Nikhil Gupta is on trial for the attempted assassination of Gurpur Pant Singh Pannu, the Khalistan leader of Six for Justice. He has said in court, he should not be tried this way because I was just doing a job for the Indian government. He has literally said this, this is quoted and, in the and USA. And you provide the quote. So on I will note, provide that quote on, for you, on no that problem. Note, I'm going to say thank you to both of you. You have made me grayer. And obviously any hair that I'm trying to keep on my head is starting to disappear. But this one thing that this our discussion has brought forward is that the idea of identity is a lot deeper than the notion of Khalistan or the notion of Bharat. And so moving forward, it'll be interesting to see where Canada comes in from. But on behalf of our network, to both Sikh PA and Bag. Thank you very much for coming on. And I'll make sure that all the links and associated information is there.
Jai Thanks, Raji. Take You're care. more than welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Global India Network. Print, TV, events, podcasts.